Forkfest.party. It's gonna be a party. All right, uh, all right, so I'm, uh, I'm here with, uh, well, not here with, but on the phone with uh, Chris Gronsky from, uh, I like to think of, oh, I like to think of you as, uh, as Chris Gronsky from NH Exit, since I'm the NH Exit guy and you're active with us, but you're, you're probably representing a different organization for this project that you're doing. Who, who do you represent currently, if anyone? Oh, I represent everybody who uh, cares about liberty and freedom, I guess, if I'm, uh, if, if I'm doing any action in that capacity. And, uh, but, um, but no, I mean, I mean, I, I'm wanting to do my part. Um, and, you know, my part of securing liberty and freedom is multifaceted. It's the nature of the work that I do. And, uh, but, you know, uh, you know when, when looking at New Hampshire and, and how its government is overreaching its, its authority, um, I'm astounded at how many people, you know, just go along to get along and, and uh obey orders or whatever that is, you know, I think we've lost our way in some ways. And the people that I associate with and talk to, you know, they don't have that sentiment. And so um, they're, you know, they're, I know a lot of people who are active in the freedom community that, that are doing things on a number of different levels. Um, this thing that I'm doing right now is, you know, the, I don't, you know, on, in, on some level, I don't, you know, I don't put demonstrating a very high on the list of, of making impact, and yet at the same time, you know, I've demonstrated over the years in different things in Washington, D.C., and certainly in front of the State House in New Hampshire. But I think one of the nice things it does is it draws out the media, and then if people can, can have a conversation of why they're pushing back or taking a stand or doing something, bringing attention, is that they want... Um, everybody else to kind of look at this conversation or take a look at whether their government is overreaching or whether their rights and, um, are being violated or not. I should, pro I should question. probably uh, oh. I should probably back up for our audience and uh, make clear that you and I are, are both New Hampshire Liberty activists. Uh, I'm considered what's called a free stater. I think you were already here before the free staters right. started flooding in from all over the country or at least trickling in. Uh, yeah. people who, uh, you know, want to migrate to the free state in the Union. Um, and um, so, but anyway, you, in, rela in, in response to the, uh, to the COVID crackdown, uh, you have announced, uh, at least a couple weeks ago, I think you were saying you were going to, you were going to demonstrate daily at the State House for a while each morning, and now you're going to be yeah. doing a tour. But, but where does the State House, where does the State House uh, thing stand well the, you know i was there um, on the saturday before easter i you know i was going to start uh, a week before we had some rainy weather and i was like oh geez i'm gonna you know, i want to get this thing going here and that was my intention to, was to be in front of the state house now when i was there on a saturday because everybody's at home nobody's driving by and i thought geez i want to support my friends i want to support my friends around the state this is definitely having an impact on the state so i thought well gee what i'll do is i'm going to do concentric circles out from the town i live in and just um if i have friends in different towns i'm going to come to their town come to their downtown and either for the morning commute commute or the go home commute um you know a couple hours and just invite people to um go back to work and to um you know move you know just interrupt this this order this unconstitutional authority that the governor doesn't have the statute that empowers him to make orders um, uh, is certainly unconstitutional so you know i mean we can talk about the health issues that are based in the corruption that's in the washington dc we can talk about last year nobody shut down the economy you know, over the years of looking at all of the flus and all of the health issues around the world, not only in America, um, we can have a conversation about the actual numbers the CDC is putting out, and this is not a big deal. It's a big deal because the media is all on board. It's a big deal because the establishment wants this, and whether it's a political ploy uh, to undermine, you know, what's going on, the po politics in D.C. or whatever, my humble opinion is this is a bank about banking collapse, and this is how the bankers and the establishment is going to point at COVID as the reason why the economy is going to collapse, um, 
And so that's what I really believe it's about. I don't believe this is about health issues. That, that being said, it doesn't mean that people don't die of the flu every year and around the world. Of course they do. If, you're, if you have a weak immune system, you might stay home. You, you know, with respect to the flu season. But this is a flu, and it's no different. As a matter of fact, it's less, diff, it's less uh, troublesome than even last year. But we didn't shut down the economy. And if you look at the government solutions for this thing, ultimately is going to be, oh, yeah, we're going to harm you and shut down your business and all these things. And, oh, by the way, we're going to let you borrow more money. That's the, that's the government solution is, oh, yeah, and, and you can borrow even more from bankers as they continue to print money and continue to screw the children of the future with debt. That's what's going on. Well, and the, so thing, the thing that is really, yeah, the thing that has really uh, stood out to me immediately was that they're not counting overall deaths, right? They're not putting anything in perspective. They're not taking into account the number of suicides that they're causing, then the number of people that are going to get killed because of the wars that start over this. I don't know when that's going to happen, but you think, you know, uh, you think a place like Bosnia is going to be able to come out of this without the tensions rising, uh, you know, after they've been quelled for so long artificially? And, uh, you, you know, I, there's all this... You know, it seems like almost nuclear tension. I guess the nuclear clock now is like at 30 seconds to midnight or something like that, the closest it's ever been. Right, well, because, I mean, take a look at it. If, if I, I mean, for political uh, reasons, if Iran has their own health issues, allegedly, um, and what our, our position in America, or at least in the administration out of, out of D.C. is, yeah, let's sanction them more. And, uh, and, you know, screw the health issues. So, you know, it, this is about banking. And why are we, why is Iran our enemy? I'll tell you why. Because they don't want to buy our dollar for petrol, for the, for the, the petrol dollar. They don't want to buy oil with the dollar. Same thing with Russia. Don't want to buy oil with the dollar. The same thing with Venezuela. Doesn't want to buy oil with the dollar. I don't know. I don't know. Look at, I'm sure I'm sure Iran is the aggressor because look how close they put their country to our military bases. <laughs> exactly. You know, but and, and it's astonishing. I mean, so I this is not about a health issue. And that's the that's the, the bad thing about it. And the C D C's numbers look at the C D C's numbers. And then what's this all about? Where like you said earlier, is that anything that dies during this time gets counted as COVID. And whether anybody even had any health issues, if they died, like you said, of suicide, if they had COVID and weren't even, like they were saying, 80% of the people that get it, it's a very mild flu. Young people don't, aren't even bothered by it. Some people don't even know it, that, that they have it. And yet if they die of suicide and they test them and they have COVID, oh, they died of COVID. This is, this is just bad. And so this is bad policy, bad data, and, you know, so this, so my sentiment isn't about um, people's health issues. You, the government can say, hey, this is what we suggest, and people can take that advice or not, but they certainly don't have the authority to tell people in their businesses, here's what you can sell and what you can't sell, here's what's essential is not, you're not essential. So one of the things that I want to do is I want to invite people around the country to, to call their, their congressman, or senator, state rep, and ask them if they believe that they're, that they're essential. And if their rep says that they're not essential, then tell the rep when the, when the next election comes up, I'm going, to, I'm going to let you know that you're not essential. Yeah, or, uh, you know, uh, you, you can always get video of them telling you you're not essential. That's also of some value. But, but I guess with regard, to, with, regard to, with regard to the exact logistics of your demonstration, uh, what are you going to be doing at your demonstrations, assuming that you get beyond, like if you get to a group of people that's larger than the, uh, than the law or, you know, the executive order currently allows, uh, what are you going to be doing? We have to... We have to take a degree of innocent until proven guilty, even when we're talking about the government, right? We, we don't right. know that the government is lying about all of the numbers. The, 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 we don't know that COVID is not dangerous. In fact, 
it probably is somewhat dangerous. And what are you going to be doing to make sure that you're not ex that no one gets exposed unnecessarily to something at any of your demonstrations? Well, I think first of all that people can govern themselves and determine how safe they want to be. If you know, if you're going to come to my demonstration, make sure that you don't ride a motorcycle because it's really dangerous. And if it, and if you're going to come to my demonstration, be sure to wear a, wear a helmet because it's really dangerous. Or if you're going to come out, make sure that you have proper clothes on because it might be cold out and it's really dangerous. Yeah, I'm not. So I'm not asking you. Them, so yeah, I'm not asking you. To, I'm not asking you what I, you'll I be doing. Ask, I'm not asking you what say, you'll be doing to protect the people who are coming to your demonstration, but to protect well, I the don't, people. I don't have an ob I don't have an obligation, Dave, to protect people. Okay, people can protect themselves. If you're over 60 and and or if you have a weak immune system, maybe you should think about whether you want to go out or not. That's up to you. But if you're not, and you're not concerned, and you're not bothered, uh, you know, that as you don't feel like you're, you should be bothered by the flu, then come on out. And now, once again, about the n number of people, you know, if I'm coming to someone's town, come on out and demonstrate. Stand or close as, or as far as you want. Govern yourself accordingly. And, uh, and stand and, and show people that you're interested in going back to work and doing, you know, what you do on a regular basis. Well, there is, there is a case to be made for the concept, though, that one should, above all, do no harm. And if you, if you, have, if you organize a demonstration where someone comes to the demonstration, collects a disease, and takes it home to someone else, that's, that's probably uh, could be considered doing harm. So you don't have any plan at all, you don't have any plan at all to limit that? Or? Of course not. I mean, that's the same logic as, well, you know, if you go to a bar and you drink, well, then the person that offers you a drink, they're responsible to make sure you're safe. And so do no harm. It's, it's not about do no harm. I'm not harming anybody being outside and, and, and uh, demonstrating and, and, and implementing the First Amendment to, you know, to not only peacefully assemble, but also to uh, demonstrate uh, based upon my First Amendment right. That's got nothing to do with anybody. Okay. Well, now there there is a there is a historical precedent for like for instance if you look at the Spanish influenza most they took the almost exact opposite approach back then of ignoring it while focusing on Germany and and killing Germans that was the only thing that was important to Americans at the time and uh, so they did almost nothing except in San Francisco and a few other places where they actually did some most many of the same things that they're doing now. And it actually worked. Well, that that is if there's a problem. Well, yeah, you know, it, it maybe. And of course, at this point, that, yeah, at this point, the government has lied to us so many times, and science has been so co-opted by the government that it's hard to know what's really going on. But it seems like there really is something out there. It doesn't it doesn't have the vibe to it that it would have if there were if there were nothing going on. Well, look, no, I mean, you got uh, you got listen. I, I wonder if something honorable is going on if the media is saying all the same thing. How about this how about this catchphrase for the media? The new normal. The new normal is the new is the basically the 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 health patriot act where we're gonna give up liberty and freedom for the new normal. Sununu talks about the new normal and the new this is all bullshit. Well, sometimes so, it, you know, know sometimes a broken is, sometimes a broken clock is right. Some it's right twice a day. What? Sometimes a broken. Exactly. No, exactly. So the idea is that the the um, you know uh, if this if we were going by last year's numbers, we didn't shut down anything. We didn't have any problems. And this last year's flu was worse than this year's. So it's a non-issue. I mean, do, is there a flu every year? Sure. And people get the flu and they spread the flu. Be careful. Keep yourself well. I don't recommend you eat the crap food out there and don't drink high fructose corn syrup and do all kinds of, you know, eat organic food. Have a strong immune system. But the bottom line is people have health issues and, and the flu is going to take them out, or it may, unless they be careful. That's how it works. So I don't have any obligation. If someone wants to, uh, obligation to make sure everybody's safe, in in a demonstration against uh, tyranny, come out if you like. If you're concerned, stay home. But if you care or care about your liberty and freedom, you know. I mean, what's the old adage? Live free or die. For there are things worse than death. What what about that? So I mean, give me 
a break, the flu is going to come and go just like it always has. And, and listen, the government's the, what they're ramping up is, hey, we're going to have a vaccine for everybody. Everybody's going to now be required of a vaccine. I want to. I want to pull back from that whole mindset that government's going to offer me some form of safety. Ain't going to what, happen. Uh, what, what, will you, what will you be doing at your demonstration to... Uh, just to holding signs and waving at people. Um, you know, well, more... more into handkerchiefs. More, no, more, <laughs> more, specific, more specifically, what will you be doing that makes your demonstration interesting to the media visually? I'm, I'm right now, you know, I, I actually had a state rep uh, with me here in Franklin today. And, you know, people wave and all that stuff. But, but no, I mean, if, if I can get people to come out and join me, uh, numbers will look great. But the idea is that, you know, we've got a lot of honks, people waving. Some people, you know, saying, you know, some people are not happy with the idea of, of shutting down the shutdown. So, you know, we're, we're dealing with people who are afraid. So, you know, this is not a health issue that I'm, I'm taking a stand on. It's not about health at all. Be careful. You're responsible for your own health. This is an issue of an overreaching government and, and, and thinking that, um, th that we can suspend the, the right to peacefully assemble, really. I don't think so. And, uh, and so the governor can't order the First Amendment away, and he can't, um, you know, he, you know when, do, when do free people take orders? Where's that all about? It's for your own safety. That's how tyrannical governments always move forward. It's for your own safety. So if you're not afraid, then come on out, join us, and then we'll have some numbers. And then eventually, you know, of course, this, this the whole thing doesn't affect my life. You know, I, I'm not, I haven't stopped doing anything I've always done. The only thing I'm not doing, I'd like to start. I'd like to go out to restaurants and enjoy myself socially. And I'm concerned about the businesses in New Hampshire that that are being harmed by the not by the virus. They're being harmed by the government. And this is this is um, this this is the, it's just the same nonsense that whenever um, you know the establishment wants to do a false flag and 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 blow something out of proportion. We lose liberties and, and we lose freedoms, and that's what I'm pushing back on. So well, do you we don't have, have any um, dancing bears. We don't have anybody on unicycles. We just want people to go back to work and and continue to serve people and and get the economy back to moving. Because I want to travel. I, you know, I want to do all the things I've always done. And you know, unless businesses are looking for making money again, you know, that's it's going to be a it's going to be. Listen, the it's. Worse than COVID-19 is going to be the results of this government shutdown, and it hasn't even arrived yet. It's going to be worse than the, than the stock market collapse back in 29. It's going to be worse than that. This is going to be bad. People, I mean, you know, I'm going to do a call on uh, tonight for the, uh, the people that I'm involved with, with my work and all. Um, and, uh, you know, I just want people to be prepared. You know, if people aren't doing their own gardens, if they're not prepared uh, for an economy that's not going to supply them their stuff, you know, they may have to think of some other ways. So I'm trying do, to interrupt that. Do you have a speaking, speaking of interrupting? Do you have a um, do you have any a website that you're associating with this or URL that you're promoting? No, I mean other than my destination freedom. Uh, um, you know my name on Facebook, but no, my my free. I'm a freedom consultant. I have clients all over the world. Um, I'm serving them in this capacity, but I don't have this this stuff on my website. I'm not addressing it from the work I'm doing. This is I'm doing this stuff, Dave, personally. I'm I'm doing my part in New Hampshire to push back and to invite my neighbors and friends to come out and just let people know it's all safe. We're going to be just fine. You know, those that are sick or, or weak, they should stay indoors, and maybe they shouldn't get the flu. But for the rest well, of or, or maybe, or maybe they should come outside and exercise a little more in some cases. But, but the, uh, I, I, how do people find out where you're going to be and when? Well, I think uh, if they, there, I have a Facebook page. It's, it's my name, Christopher Gronsky, and then on my picture. I have two Facebook pages. One's my personal, and the other is my public page. My public page, on my picture, it says Destination Freedom. 
And so that Facebook page, I'm going to put, I will keep doing updates of where I'm going to be. Tomorrow, I'm going to be in Tilton, uh, Tilton in front of Walmart, uh, or close to uh, the I-93 overpass there in Tilton. Then I think on Friday, I'm going to be in, um, um, let's see, let's see, Thursday, I'm going to be in Bristol, and I think Friday, I'm going to be in um, Grafton. Okay, today today uh, is uh, today is April fourteenth. By the way, it may be a couple of days before I before I upload this. Okay. You know, I've always wanted to, yeah, I wanted, yeah. always wanted to ask you, uh, Gronsky, sure. that uh, mo- mo- movie uh, movie 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 tape of Polsku. What? I'm going to take that as a ne. <laughs> what? Oh, do I speak Polish? Yeah. N- no, I, I don't speak Polish. I've, um... I have a good uh, Polish uh, heritage, though, um, and uh, I, I have some heroes from Poland that are freedom fighters, and I um, so that resonates with me. But uh, but no, I don't um, I don't have a lot of information on my father's side of uh, uh, you know my connections to uh, some of those patriots in Poland. Okay, but, uh, can, can you uh, can you think of anything else that you'd like to add? No, I just, you know, I just want people to push back and, and to, and, and one of the ways to do that is just to go back to your life doing what you do. And look, there's, you know, like Frederick Douglass said, power concedes nothing without a demand. It never did and it never will. Find out what people will submit to and you will have found the exact amount of injustice and wrong which will be imposed upon them. And these will continue until they're resisted with either words or blows or with both. The limits of tyrants are prescribed by the endurance of those whom they oppress. That's Frederick Douglass. And that's what's happening now. And so that's all. We're just, I'm just trying to push back and invite people to join me in the pushback. And we'll see where it goes. You know? Okay. Be sure to uh, let me know if anything interesting happens to you out there. And uh, has anything interesting happened so far? Has anyone threatened you over this? No, I, I, you know, I, I think about that, but you know, nah, I'm, I'm not, I'm not too concerned. I just want people to see it. I get a lot of smiles, a lot of thumbs up, and you know, a couple of sneers. But that's all expected. You know, it's okay. People are just people. I just, uh, I think that I'm, I'm doing it for them too. You know, so that they can have uh, their liberties and freedoms. And this is a very peaceful way to, to resist and push back. It's nonviolent. And uh, I think it's it's uh, it's fun. It's beautiful out, and New Hampshire is a beautiful country. So I think that people should like, you know, should enjoy it. Um, but uh, yeah, so I think that's that's all. That's where I'm at with all that. All right. Thank you, Jean Queer. All right. Take care. Okay. You too, so, Chris. So Dave, um, when you if you put this up, my name is Christopher. It's not Chris. You don't go by Chris anymore? I thought you used to go by Chris. Uh, yeah, before I got married to my wife, I, I went by Chris. But, but I mean, my name is Christopher, but since I married my wife, I introduced myself as Christopher. So if you type it up, make sure it's Christopher, because if you do a Google search, my name and the things that I do is Christopher, okay? Yeah. All right. Well, you only get one chance to introduce yourself to me. You're stuck with whatever you said when you you said. I think you said Chris. <laughs> I can't remember two no, different no, names. I always, no, I mean originally. I think when we originally met years ago and all, you know, Chris was fine. But as I but as I began to be more public and all, um, I you know, it's Christopher is is the name that I go by. And uh, but just to let you know, also, I just talked to my state rep here in, in Franklin. Um, who just told me that he's looking to be replaced, and I, I just talked to my wife, and I'm considering running for office and, and taking his place. So. Oh, okay. All right, that's good. All right. Uh, and I guess I, I think I mentioned this at the beginning of the our interview has been recorded and will appear on RidleyReport.com. That sounds great. That sounds great. You're you're an awesome um, uh, media specialist, and uh, I always think you you have a great sense of humor. And I'm, I'm thankful for all that you've done. You've really helped a lot. A lot of people, uh, you know, see what you've done, and I'm just delighted for your your service. It's been great. Yeah, thanks. Hopefully a, a couple of people will show up at your demonstrations who wouldn't have been in New Hampshire without me. I like to think that, and I'm told that sometimes. That's exactly. That's great. Well, good. I, I would agree. All right, well, we'll talk soon, huh? All right. That's, the, that's likely. All right, 
and uh, and take care. And I'll I'll um, I'll message over where I'm going to be. You know, as I'll just give you a heads up because I I sent out a um, I sent out a, a little press release to WMUR um, union leader and the uh, what the heck was the other one? Um, I I don't think it was the Concord Monitor. Anyway, there was three of them. Um, but and so I'll I'll keep you in that that loop. Okay, wherever I'm going to be. But that's all I want to do is get around the state. We'll see if we can get more numbers. <laughs> okay, thanks, Christopher, but I'm going to forget the full name by the time I talk to you again. It's going to be back to Chris. You'll have to correct me again. <laughs> I'll give you a pass. All right. But, but listen, but, when, but, but my request is when you broadcast it or that you, you know, when we're on the, you know, when we're doing, dealing with the social media and all, uh, please put Christopher. Uh, yeah, I'll write you up as Christopher. That would be great. I appreciate that. All right, thanks. All right, you're the best. Take care. Take care. Bye. You've probably heard of Porkfest, but have you heard of Forkfest? It's a decentralized alternative. It's also at Rogers Campground at a slightly different time. You don't even need a ticket. Visit Forkfest.party. It's gonna be a party.